Hi, Mr. Richmond, and this is your Integrated Math 2, Unit 4.6 Lesson Summary. Um, this will be our last lesson in the chapter. Um, it's really just a, a, a unit, or sorry, a section about applications and how you can use similar triangles to solve more rural problems. Um, and some of the math used in here is actually used in surveying um, and other fields like that where they're trying to find height of objects, um, measure distances in a more useful way, especially if you have uh, big distances or very large heights, it's not feasible to just take a tape measure and run it up there. Um, so they can use similar triangles um, to calculate lengths. And uh, some, some teachers might even take you outside and give you a chance to kind of do some activities with this. Um, it just kind of depends on, on how the time is, but I know over here at Vista we do a, a little similar triangle activity, trying to measure building heights and things like that. Um, using these similar triangles. So hopefully if you've done that activity, this should make a little more sense. But let's jump right into a sample problem regarding this. Um, here's our situation. Uh, we're going to have someone who's kind of chosen a position to stand out away from uh, a smaller tree or some sort of known height. Um, and they're going to make sure that the angle that they're viewing it at is the same for both objects. So if I look at it from a 50 degree angle here to reach the top and a 50 degree angle to reach the top of the tree, then I'm creating a similar triangle situation that I can use. Um, the way you're creating similar triangles here, if I kind of draw them real quick, what you have on the left, I basically have this triangle here, which is the height of the tree, 20. Because it's a straight up altitude when measuring height, I know that's a right angle. And I know that this angle is 50. And since I know that, I have a right angle in 50, and on the larger triangle, I have the same situation. I have a right angle measuring straight up to height. I don't know the height, but we'll call it x. Um, but I know the base is 32, and actually here I know the base is 18, and I know this angle is 50. I know that these two triangles are similar because of angle, angle, 90, 50, 90, 50. So I know that they're similar. I just have to match them up appropriately. Um, and so knowing that, I can now just have a proportion and solve for the missing height of the larger tree. Now, when you look at it this way, you might mess up your proportion. So it's always a good idea to kind of map them over and make sure that they're, they have the same shape, same, facing the same way, basically. So I'm going to take this triangle and redraw it. If I basically kind of just reflect it horizontally here and map it over, it would have this look here. And the X wouldn't move, it'd stay where it's at, but everything else would flip. So my 50 degree angle would come to this side, my 32 would still be at the base, but my right angle would be here. And so this gives me a better perspective for comparing them. Um, it's always a good idea to do that when looking at similar triangles. And now I can just set up my proportion. The altitude of the small triangle is 20, and so I'm going to set that over the altitude of the larger triangle, x, and it should be equal to the base of the smaller triangle, 18, over the base of the larger triangle, 32. And by setting that up, I can now cross multiply and solve. Before I do so, though, I am going to try to simplify this sum. So I'm going to go 20 over x equals, and I can make that, divide both those by 2, and go 9 over 16. Now I have some smaller numbers to work with, and I can go ahead and cross multiply. 9 times x is 9x, 20 times 16 is, or 2 times 16 is 32, add a 0 is 320. I'm going to divide both sides by 9, and that should give me the total. I'm going to do 320 divided by 9. I'm going to calculate real quick, speed it up, although I could do long division. Um, 35.5 repeating. So I'm going to just approximate that to 35.6. And we're talking about feet, so I'll put feet. Now it's a word problem. And I'm real big on the whole, if it's a word problem, try to answer it in words. Okay, I didn't ask anything about what x is in this problem. I said calculate the height of the larger tree. So, you know, tell me that. The height. of the larger tree is 35.6 feet. And this, of course, in reality would probably be a, a bit of an estimate. It wouldn't be exact. Um, the reason being that there's 
possibility for error if you're doing these activities you know, in the classroom outside because you're probably measuring it off your own eyesight, measuring up, measuring an angle. When people do surveying, they can actually put something into the ground and measure the angle um, with laser beams coming off the ground to know exactly what that angle is. So they can get a much more accurate um, reading of the angle using technology. The math is the same, but the technology allows them to get a much more accurate angle and keep everything much more tight and exact. So um, the rest of the applications in this chapter are fairly similar to this. There are some involving Pythagorean theorem. Um, I just wanted to show you one to give you an idea of how to set it up. Um, remember to always kind of make the similar triangles when you can and to match them up so that it's a little easier to compare the, the sides and find the correct ratios. All right, thank you and good luck with chapter four.